Now that we've looked at the consumption choice budget constraint and the labor leisure budget constraint, we're going to take a look at the intertemporal choice budget constraint. Now this one is going to be equivalent to our financial capital market and what we're looking at here is the choice between present consumption and present savings versus future consumption. This is going to look very much like our labor leisure graph. So let's put it up and show you what's going on. Our y and x axis again have to exist. On the y axis we're going to be looking at future consumption. On the x axis we're going to be looking at two sides of the same coin. We're going to see present saving present saving and present consumption and if I only have a thousand dollars which is what we're going to use in this example I can either save it or consume it or some combination of the two but only a thousand dollars worth. So I could save up to a thousand dollars or I could consume up to a thousand dollars. Now the other thing we need to know, there are two other things we actually need to know and that's going to be the interest rate I can receive and the number of years that I'm putting it away for. And for our example, we're going to put our money away for 25 years. And we're going to take a look at a 10% interest rate. If I were to save $1,000 at 10% interest for 25 years, after the magic of compound interest, we'd come up with 10000 $835. That's how much I'd have waiting for me in 25 years. Not too shabby. Now, if I saved zero dollars and consumed it all in the present, I would have be saving nothing for 25 years and nothing compounded is still nothing. So we know our two endpoints. We'll go ahead and connect them with the line. Now we'll take a look at a couple point, other points on the present savings, present consumption line. We're going to see what we're looking at if we save $800. And we'll take a look at what happens when we save $300. If we save $800 for 25 years at 10% interest, we're going to walk away with eight thousand six hundred and sixty eight dollars not bad if we were to save three hundred dollars for twenty five years at ten percent interest we'll walk away with thirty two fifty again not too shabby these are two points on our budget constraint so now we can see what our different choices are what's available to us and of course we're going to try to consume somewhere on this budget constraint this is where we're going to have our mix between present savings and present consumption and future consumption we want to be able to consume somewhere on this line if we choose this point that means that we're going to consume seven hundred dollars worth of goods and services now and in 25 years we'll be able to consume $3,250 of goods and services. Just like here, we're consuming $200 worth of goods and services now, so in the future we can consume $8,668 worth of goods and services. Are we going to choose to consume in the present here and in the future here? No, why would we do that? Then we'd be saving our money for less than what we would be able to. So we don't want to do that. That doesn't sound like a good deal. 
are we going to be able to consume in a point out here where we're consuming $700 worth of goods now and 8668 in the future? That would be great, but we're not being offered that high of an interest rate, so we can't do that. So what happens if our interest rate changes? Let's say something goes down in the market, and now we can only guarantee ourselves a 5% interest rate for over the next 25 years. How is that going to affect our budget constraint? If you said it would rotate in, you are correct. At 5%, if we save $1,000 currently, after 25 years, we'll have $3,386. That's our end point. If we save zero, we'll still have zero in the future. So now let's take a look at what happens if we save $800 in the present. After 25 years, we would have $2,709 with which to spend. If we were to save $300 in the present, we would end up with $1,016 to spend. Yikes. So our points are going to look here and here. A 5% drop in the interest rate is a big significant change. Again, where are we going to choose to consume on either of these lines? Well, personal preference is going to dictate that to us.